بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما I start with the name of Allah I praise him and thank him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad and to protect his Muslim nation from whatever he feared for this nation. In our last lesson, the 25th lesson, we mentioned the story of the cow we mentioned that the children of Israel were lost in a land for 40 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down onto them al-man, mana, and as-salwa, and some type of birds. And also we said that they needed water, and Prophet Musa alayhi salam would have a rock that he hit to get water out of this rock in 12 springs for the 12 tribes of Israel. And later he changed the hitting to just speaking to the rock and getting the water out. When they complained about their clothes that they would rip and be worn out, Musa alayhi salam reassured the Israelites, that their clothes will not be worn out and they will not rip. They complained about having the same food and wanted other types of food and like onions and lentils and grains. Also, we mentioned that Prophet Musa alayhi salam wanted to meet Al-Khadir out of his desire to learn and, of course, to meet a man of merit, meritorious person. When Musa was asked, who is the most knowledgeable person on earth? He said, I am. As far as he knew, that was why he answered. Then he was informed by Allah that there is a knowledgeable person somewhere described to him, and this made Musa very, uh, ins- you know, uh, having a large desire to meet Al-Khadir, to, le- to learn from him. So this is how far we got. Musa, alayhi salam, went out on his trip to meet Al-Khadir with his young servant, Yusha, and uh, they reached an area and the fish that they carried, we said, it jumped out of the container and Yusha or Joshua told Musa where this event took place and then they went back and next to that area, Musa alayhi salam met Al-Khadir. So we're going to start from here. Moses, the author said, Moses set out with Joshua, Yusha, Ibn Nun, or the son of Nun, and this man later would become a prophet of Allah. So they carried a salted fish in a container. They reached a rock, and Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, slept. The fish shook in the container, moved, although it was, what, salted. And then the fish shook so much 
that it came out of the container and went into the water. The next day, Musa and Yusha or Joshua continued walking, and then the night came in. Joshua forgot to tell Musa alayhi salam about what had happened to the fish. When the next morning came, Musa alayhi salam said to Yusha, Moses said to Joshua, we are so tired of traveling, let's eat. And the details of this event are mentioned in a, in, in the surah called Al-Kahf in Al-Quran, and also it's mentioned in a long, long hadith by the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. So Musa hadn't gotten tired until he had crossed the point where the fish had escaped. So they were walking. Musa wasn't exhausted or tired. Later, after they crossed that area, then he slept and then felt hungry. So Musa told, let's, told Joshua, let's eat. We're tired of our traveling. So Joshua said to Musa alayhi salam, do you remember the rock where we stopped and slept? There, the salted fish jumped out of our container and swam away. To this, Musa alayhi salam said, well, the goal of our travel was to get to that location. Because that's the location that Musa was informed would be close to where Al-Khadir was. So he told them, let's go back. Because they had crossed that area. So they went back following their own Traces and footsteps means tracking back their steps until they reached the area where the rock was. And there they saw a man at the rock covered with a cloth. Prophet Musa alayhi salam saluted him and this man was Al-Khadir. So Al-Khadir, this man that we talked about before that we said, some scholars said he was a prophet of Allah, and other scholars said he was not a prophet, but just a righteous man. So this man said to Musa, after he saluted him, Are you Musa, the prophet sent to the children of Israel? Hal anta Musa bani Israel? Musa said yes. Then Al-Khadir told him, Allah gave you knowledge that I do not know. And Allah gave me knowledge that you do not know. It means you have something that I do not know Allah gave you but did not give to me. And I have some knowledge that uh, God gave me but did not give you. So Musa asked Al-Khadr, may I follow you so that you teach me that which I do not know. So Musa alayhi salam, being a prophet of Allah, one of the qualities of the prophets that they are humble. They are not arrogant. And they love to learn more of good things. So he took all that trip to learn from Al-Khadir. So Al-Khadir told him that you have some knowledge that I don't have and I have some knowledge that you do not have. Because some people may say, who is more knowledgeable, Al-Khadir or Musa? We know Musa alayhi salam is without a doubt at a higher rank than Al-Khadir. Musa is one of the, of Ulul Azm, of the five best messengers of Allah. Al-Khadir is not one of them. So Musa is at a higher rank than Al-Khadir. It doesn't mean that Musa knows everything, and it doesn't mean that Al-Khadir knows everything. Allah specified both men, each with certain knowledge that the other one did not have. And Musa did not mind. He wanted to learn. So he said, may I follow you so that I learn from you things that I do not know. Al-Khadr said, you will not be patient with me. 
how would you be patient with a matter of which you are unaware? It means I have certain knowledge that you don't know. If you want to follow me, then you may not be patient with what you encounter because of your lack of knowledge about it. Musa alayhi salam said, Allah, God willing, you will find me to be a patient man. I will comply with whatever you order. Those among you who memorize Al-Kahf, they could just run the ayat, the verses in their heads, and they would know what we were talking about. Al-Khadir, alayhi salam, said, you can accompany me with the condition, you can go with me, accompany me with the condition, that you do not ask me about anything until I decide to tell you about it. So you cannot ask, inquire about a matter unless I want to initiate telling you. You cannot ask me about it. Musa alayhi salam said, I agree. And you could see how humble and compliant and easygoing Musa alayhi salam was with Al-Khadir, although he was at a higher rank than Al-Khadir himself. But what did he want? He wanted to learn. So he humbled himself to the teacher, if you want, at that, at that moment or in that condition. And so he told him, this is my, these are my conditions. He said, I'll, I'll, it's okay with me. I'll go for these conditions. Musa and Al-Khadir went walking along the seashore. A vessel came by, a ship, a boat. Al-Khadir and Musa asked the people of the vessel, those who own it, to take them aboard. And the people of the vessel knew Al-Khadir beforehand, so they took them aboard without any fee for free they took them without charging them any money because they knew al-khadir while prophet musa was with al-khadir on the vessel a bird on the edge of the vessel put its beak in the water one time so a bird came and dipped its beak in the water one time and put its beak you know up al-khadir saw what the bird did and he said to Musa alayhi salam in comparison to the things that God knows my knowledge and your knowledge is less than the drop of water pulled by this bird so when this bird put its beak in the water it picked up some water the drop of water so, Al-Khadir said to Musa, alayhim salam he said, that drop of water that this bird took up, took out of the water, is so small compared to other things around, to the sea, for example, the whole sea. My knowledge and your knowledge put together, in comparison to what Allah knows, is as much as this drop compared to the whole ocean. Meaning that whatever you and I know are very much little, very little compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is narrated by Imam Muslim in his book As-Sahih. Now while they were on the vessel, Al-Khadr reached for one of the wooden planks of the ship, of this vessel, and pulled it off. So he took one of those planks on the side and then took it out of its place. Now the people who owned the vessel or in charge of the vessel did not see Al-Khadr doing that. But Musa alayhi salam saw it. So he was astonished by this act and said to Al-Khadir do you do this means are you ruining the ship the vessel do you do this 
to the vessel of the people who took us aboard without a fee so that the vessel would sink with its people. These people took us without charging us, took us on board. Now what are you doing? You're pulling this piece of the ship out of its place to make the ship sink? Is this the way you pay these people back for being nice to us? Because it seemed to him apparently that Al-Khadir is doing something which is harmful to the ship and the people. So he asked this question. And Al-Khadir being known to Musa means he was told through revelation that Al-Khadir was a pious person. So it was amazing to him, surprising to him that a righteous person would do such a foul act, apparently, destroying people's properties. So he asked him that question. Al-Khadir told Musa, didn't I tell you that you would not be patient with me? Didn't I tell you that you would not be patient with me? Prophet Musa, of course, remembered that he agreed to the conditions of Al-Khadr that he wouldn't ask about a matter unless Al-Khadr himself, you know, initiated telling about it. So he said, Musa said, do not blame me about what I forgot. I'm tired from traveling. He said, I'm tired from traveling and I forgot that we agreed to something. So don't, do not blame me. Then the two, means Al-Khadr and Musa alayhim as they disembarked from the vessel, means they left the vessel when they reached their uh, place, destination, and then they continued walking. Then they ca- came, both of them, upon a boy playing with other boys. They saw boys playing, and then was specific boy playing with them. Al-Khadr reached for that boy's head and pulled it off with his hands. He just took the head of the boy off. And Musa alayhi salam saw it happening. He told Al-Khadr, how did you do? How do you kill someone that has not killed anyone else? Means this is a boy. He hasn't killed anyone. So he doesn't deserve to be punished by having him killed. So how do you kill a person who did not deserve to be punished through killing. Al-Khadr said, didn't I tell you that you would not be patient with me? So Prophet Musa alayhi salam, this is his second time. He said, if I ask you about anything after this time, without initiating to tell me about it, without you initiating telling me about it, then I will no longer accompany you. Our Agreement is that I don't ask you until unless you tell me. I did it twice now. Okay? So first time I forgot. The second time I did it. And I broke, you know, what we agreed upon. So if I do it another time, a third time, then I will not accompany you. So they reached a town. They moved, walked, reached a town. And the people there did not treat them kindly as guests. They asked to be guests, and then they refused to have them as guests. So they were rude with them. They did not offer them food. And Al-Khadr, when they walked into town, saw a wall that was about to fall down. Was about to fall down. So he worked. Al-Khadir, and made the wall straight. He worked on it until it became straight. When Musa saw this, he said to Al-Khadir, we came to a people who did not offer us food. They were not nice to us. If you had taken a fee for your work, you fixed this wall for free. If he had taken a fee, some money for doing this work, we could have used that money to buy food because we need to eat. Al-Khadr said, now we must part. We must just separate from each other. This is your third time as 
you mentioned, I shall tell you about the truth of these matters with which you were not patient. You were not patient with those three matters. So I'm going to tell you about the truth about these matters. Not, you did not wait until I told you about it. So the first matter was about the ship. He said, as for the ship, it belongs to some poor people at sea. I wanted to put a defect, defect in the ship because there is an unjust king who takes good sound ships away from their owners. So there was a king, when he sees a nice ship that is sailing and there is no defect in it, he just takes it away from its owners. So he said, when the king sees this ship, he will see there is a defect in it. Means when I pulled that plank off the ship, now it became defective. So when the king sees this defect, what will he do? He will not take it. It's not his standard. He usually takes the ships that were totally undefective. So later, the people means the owners, the people in charge of the ship, can easily fix the defect with wood. means you have two choices. If I keep it as is, the king sees it, he takes it from them, they lose it all. So what I did is just took a plank of it to seem that it's not a good ship, it's defective. So now taking this out can be easily fixed. They could put another plank and back, and then the ship will be sailing without a problem. So it means that the act of pulling that plank off the ship was not very serious to the point that it endangered the sinking of the ship or the lives of the people there. So that was something that Musa was not aware of, and Al-Khadr knew And that's why he acted as such. So he explained it to Musa that this is the first thing that you were not patient with. As to the boy I killed, he's tell him, he told him, as to the boy I killed, if he had lived to be adolescent, to be close to pubescence, he would have become a disbeliever. His parents treated him generously. Had he grown up, he would have been a tyrant to them. He would have mistreated them, exhausting them with his behavior. I wanted God to replace that child with another who is merciful to them. So let me repeat. Remember they passed by a group of boys playing and then Al-Khadr picked a boy and then He took his head off and killed him. So he told him, this boy that I killed, he had two parents. His parents loved him very much and they treated him very nicely. But the boy was mistreating his parents, was, you know, uh, very rude to them, very rough with them. So he told him, had this child grown up to become adolescent, he would have become, you know, very uh, unjust to his parents and he would have harmed them immensely. Some people said that he may have misled them out of Islam. So he told them, that's why we, I wanted this child to be, to be gone and not harm his parents and be replaced with a child which is merciful to his parents. Now, this issue, of course, uh, has to do with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Allah knows things before they happen. Allah knows everything before anything happens. 
So Allah's knowledge is eternal without a beginning. Everything that would happen from, you know, any time people are living is known to Allah. So we have time that passes on us. We have a past, we have a present, and then we have something we call future. So whether it is in the past of the humans, or it is in their present time, or it is in their future, everything is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that Allah is not bound by time. Allah's existence had no beginning and shall have no end. Now, so Allah knows our past, present, and future. Now, there is something that also scholars mention that Allah knows. If something were to happen, Allah knew eternally how it would happen. If something were to happen in a certain way, Allah would know it, how it would happen. And if something were to happen and it did not happen, Allah would know also about it as it is, without any ambiguity. So this child did not grow up to become an adolescent. He was killed by Al-Khadr. Al-Khadr said if he were to grow up, he would grow up being tyrant to his parents. But did this happen? No. But Allah knows such a matter that if it were to happen a certain way, Allah knows about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for that child to be killed on the hands of Al-Khadr. Now, the child is Allah's property and Allah does with his property whatever he will. And always there is wisdom in what Allah does. Then Al-Khadr continued to say, as to the wall, because they passed by that village, and he found that wall about to fall, collapse, and then he fixed it. He said, as to the wall, two orphan boys own it. Under the wall is something that their pious father hid for them. So something that the father had hidden for them. I, Al-Khadr said, wanted to preserve that wall from falling down to keep that thing for them hidden until they grow up and are able to use it. So like a treasure, something with value, the father buried under the wall. If the wall were to fall, then it would be exposed and people would take it. So he said, I wanted the wall to be fixed so that the thing hidden would be would stay there until the children grew up and were able to, inshallah, use that hidden thing. All of that which I did, Al-Khadr said, I did not do on my own. I did not just do it out of my own thinking. Rather, I was ordered by God to do, to do all of it. He said, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي that I did not do it out of my own, I did it because God ordered me to do it. This is the meaning, he told him, of the matters which, with which you were not patient. So Al-Khadr explained those three matters to Musa alayhi salam. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was narrating this incident, this meeting of Musa and Al-Khadr to his companions, he said at the end, may God have mercy on Musa, may Allah have mercy on Musa. I wish that he had more patience, more would have happened and we could have learned more stories. It means because Musa was not as patient, they had three things happened only. If he was more patient, if he were more patient, then he would have continued to move from one place to another and more things would have happened with them 
and then we would have learned more from their meeting. But subhanallah, Allah willed that Musa would be that patient. Qarun, the author said, Qarun, the evil cousin. Like all the prophets, Prophet Moses had many hardships that he endured with patience. One report that shows his endurance is the story of the harm that the cousin of Moses inflicted on him. So Musa had a cousin, and among the incidents that happened with Musa that were, you know, afflictions, one of them is what his cousin did to him. So Musa alayhi salam was also patient in this case. This cousin had the name Qarun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this cousin of Musa, Qarun, a lot of wealth. And it's mentioned in Al-Quran that even a group of strong men could not carry the keys of the boxes of the wealth of this man. Means this man had a lot of gold and silver and other things. They would be kept in boxes and then they have keys. So if you count, you know, collect all these keys, they have weight. It's not like, like our keys nowadays, it's just plastic or, or, you know, light metal. They were heavy. So if you put all these keys together and you bring a group of men to carry them all, they cannot carry them. Which means it's a sign of how much wealth this Qarun had been given by Allah. This Qarun showed off and was not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who endowed him with this wealth. He wore fancy clothes. He walked, you know, in a, in an arrogant way, strutted around. He lived in palaces with many slaves and servants. But one of also his qualities, bad qualities, that he was highly arrogant with people. When they advised him to give up his arrogance, he refused. When Qarun was advised by other people, just quit this arrogance, he refused to do that. He believed, this Qarun, believed that God loved him, accepted him, and that's why he gave him all this wealth. So, and he did not see there is a reason to see, you know, to change the way he lived. He said, God loves me, loves me. That's why he gave me all of that. So why would I change? I'm going to stay the way I am. And this is the way that people act when they have no belief in a life after death. The people who live think that this is the only life that is you know, available for people, they say, okay, God, you know, gave me this wealth, I'm going to use it to my interest, so don't tell me to spend it here, spend it there, I'm going to spend it the way I want, and then they have this chip, as they say, on their shoulder now, that they are better than people, and richer, and stronger, so such people become very arrogant, and very naughty. Qarun was like this. Allah revealed to Musa alayhi salam that he, Musa, and his people had the obligation to pay a certain amount of their wealth to those in need. So some of the Muslims, that Musa and his followers, the Muslim followers from the children of Israel, are obligated to pay part of their wealth to the needy Muslims, to the needy Muslims. Don't we have this in our uh, rules, the rules of Prophet Muhammad? We pay zakah if we are, we have certain amount of wealth, then we are obligated to pay zakah to the needy Muslims. So these Muslims were ordered to pay similar amount. Moses told Qarun to pay one dinar for each 1,000 dinars and one dirham for each 1,000 dirhams. 
So he's going to pay one per thousand. So one per thousand, how much do Muslims pay? They follow to Muhammad Zakah. They say 2.5%, isn't it? This guy's going to pay 0.1%. So he didn't want to pay that amount, one per thousand. So Musa told him, you have to pay one per thousand. Every thousand dinars, you have to pay one, th- one dinar to the poor. Every one thousand, you know, dirham of silver, you have to pay one to the poor people. Now, when Qarun calculated the amount that he would be obliged to pay, he thought that it was enormous. Okay? Let's say if he has one million and he's gonna pay for each one thousand one, so he has to pay one thousand, isn't it? So he thought that this is a lot. Of course he had more than that. So, Harun was overwhelmed with stinginess and committed apostasy. He stopped being a Muslim. He said that, said something that took him out of Islam. So, Harun gathered some of his supporters and said, Moses commanded you with so many things and you obeyed him. Now, Moses wants to take away your money. It means he told you to pray, he told you to do this and that, and you were following his orders. Now look what he wants. Musa wants to take away your money. So, these people said, tell us, command us, and we will do what you wish. So it means now they are on the same wavelength that they say, they have the same idea to refuse to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to commit apostasy. Qarun said, bring a sinful woman, bring a woman who is sinful, pay her to lie, to tell a lie, by saying that Musa wanted to commit adultery with her. So he said, go to a woman who is not clean, who is sinful, pay her money, and tell her we pay you this much money, and then you tell the people of Israel that Musa alayhi salam committed adultery with you. Illegal sexual intercourse. So Qarun's followers went and gave a sinful woman plenty of money, a lot of gold, to do such a foul act. On a day of feast, means a day where people, you know, gather together, Qarun approached Musa alayhi salam, pretending to be loving and nice, and he said, your people have gathered, gathered here so that you will command them to do the lawful and to abstain from the unlawful. Here are your people. So they are here, they want to listen to you, telling them to do their obligations and to avoid the prohibitions. So Prophet Musa alayhi salam addressed his people. He who steals has the punishment of his hand being cut off. So he was telling them certain rules that he received. So he said, he who steals, among what he said, the one who steals will have as a punishment his hand cut off. Then he said, the unmarried one, the person who's single, and who commits zina will be lashed, will be whipped. As for the married one who commits this zina, this adultery, will be stoned to death. Something which we already know, isn't it? This is the judgment in Prophet Muhammad's ruling uh, rules. So, the thief will have his hand cut off. The single person who commits zina, fornication, will, have, will be whipped. And the married person who commits adultery will be stoned to death. So, Qarun now, being evil, cried, even if it is you, O Moses, means this rule applies to everyone, even you, including you, if you did such things, 
We will enforce such punishments on you. Moses replied, God, help me from you. God, may God, yani, help me from you. May it protect me from you. I do not even approach sins. Means you say such things, and you know I'm a prophet of Allah. I do not approach, I don't commit thievery. Thievery is an enormous sin. Prophets do not commit uh, enormous sins. Fornication or adultery, zina, is an enormous sin. It's a very ugly sin. Prophets are protected from committing such sins. So he said, may Allah protect me from you. I do not commit such sins. I do not approach them. Harun then said, well, the children of Israel are lying. They said that you committed adultery with an evil woman. So he told them, oh, means there are people who are telling me or telling or spreading around that you committed zina. You committed adultery with an evil woman. So he said they're lying about you. And he's acting what? As if he has nothing to do with it. He's not the one who is spreading it. Musa alayhi salam said, call her, call this woman that I'm, you know, accused of committing adultery with. So they called for her and she came. Musa then uttered a vow in the name of Allah who cleft the sea and who revealed the Torah and he asked her by that vow to say the truth. So he said to the woman, I ask you by Allah, the one who split the sea for the children of Israel, the one who revealed the Torah to Musa. He said, I ask you by this to say the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was merciful with this woman. She immediately, you know, said the truth. She repented from, you know, her sins. And she told the people, Moses is innocent of these accusations. Qarun paid me to say Moses committed adultery with me. So immediately she said the straight truth. Musa alayhi salam, when he heard this, he made sujood, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him, asking Allah the Almighty, to give him, to give Moses, victory over his oppressors. Musa then received the revelation from Allah that the earth would obey him in whatever he wishes. Allah revealed to Musa, the earth is under your you know, command. Tell the earth what you want and it will do exactly what you wish. On the next day, Qarun went out as usual, you know, with his pompous looks and his, you know, entourage with, you know, clothes and people. He had thousands of servants and attendants. They wore all these ornamented clothing with gold and jewels. And he, Arun was, of course, in the front, and he had, was riding a black and white ornamented female mule. And everybody had their animals, of course, riding their animals behind him. So this was the procession of Qarun and his followers. So people were looking at all of this. Now, the deceived people among the spectators, means those who were watching what's happening, so those who were not seeing the fact of the matter, they said, may Qarun enjoy his blessings. He is very lucky with his money and high status. So when people looked at it and they said, oh, this is a lucky man, Qarun. May he enjoy what he has. He has a lot of wealth and he has a high status in the community. Among the spectators also, the people watching what's happening, were pious Muslims. And when they heard these statements, they said to these people, do not say such a thing. Do not be deceived 
by his wealth. This world is coming to an end, so do not be deceived by its decorations or its fancy look. Qarun, all of this is mentioned in Al-Quran. وَيْكَأَنَّهُ إِتْسَرُ Qarun reached a place where Prophet Musa was teaching the people. So he came with his procession. Musa was teaching some people. He called out to Musa alayhi salam. He said, O oh Moses, if you were preferred to me in prophecy, I was preferred to you with money. If you were preferred to me in prophecy, means if God made you better than me by making you a prophet, God preferred to me by giving me more money than he gave you. If you want, make a supplication to God against me. He was challenging Prophet Musa in Udru Alayhi. He said, if you want, make a dua against me. Ask God something that hurts me. Then Prophet Musa Alayhi Salam, he approached with a steady heart, relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qarun started to ask God for help. But he was not answered. Prophet Musa said, O oh Allah, command the earth to obey me today. And then he commanded the earth and said, O oh earth, take them. Take Qarun and everyone else. And then upon that statement by Moses, Qarun and his evil followers started to sink into the ground. First, their feet sank. Then Prophet Musa said, O earth, take them to their knees. Then they sank to their knees. Then Musa asked that they sink to their shoulders. Then they sank to their shoulders. Finally, Musa told the earth to take them totally, along with all the treasures that they had. And the earth trembled under Qarun's house. The earth swallowed all of his money within that house, in addition to having totally swallowed him and his followers. فَخَصَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ As mentioned in Al-Quran. Now when people saw all of that happening, they repented and praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They thanked Allah that they were not made like Qarun and his mean followers. Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala Barakallahu feekum. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم